because this is a safety critical application, we need to take into account different failures that could occur during the flight path to the landing. We need to do this by designing a system that has redundancy built in and can accommodate various failures that might happen during the landing phase. We can see that in the avionics subsystem, we've modeled both the right avionics bay and the left avionics bay, which is, a, which is similar to the architecture specified for this vehicle. We're also simulating failures that could occur through a series of switches that we will look at later. In the right avionics bay, there's one CPU, which is CPU A, and the left bay contains CPUs B and C. Inside each CPU is a set of software applications that are all built as referenced simulate models. Let's look at the FDIR application which is built as a separate simulink model, and it manages the fault detection, isolation, and recovery aspects of the vehicle. Opening this model shows us the logic that's contained within it. Here we're using state flow as a way to manage what the vehicle should do in the event of failures of position sensors on the actuators, which uh, manage the control surfaces or how it should react in the case of low hydraulic pressure. This manages what happens when something fails in the control surfaces, and these are critical to the flight of the vehicle, so there's redundancy built into these areas. The logic for these is modeled and designed in state flow, and the vehicle is divided into the left side and the right side. The actuators on the left side have a, um, a primary actuation system and a backup actuation system. And on the right-hand side, there's a primary and a backup system as well. Looking at these in more detail, we see that there are five different states that each hydraulic system could be in, passive mode or active mode, and also a standby mode. And finally, in the event of an, of an error occurring or a a failure being detected, each system can go into an isolated mode. These, these states work together so that if one actuator is in active mode, that the redundant or backup actuator is in passive mode. Now we're going to look at the overall vehicle response to simulated failures. To do this, we will look back at the flight simulator interface, and we will simulate the failures through the actuation system failures block. Here we have switches that are hooked up to simulate failures of the hydraulic system and the sensor system. What we're going to do for this example is simulate failures of the hydraulics on the main elevator of the system, which controls the pitch. The vehicle starts its descent toward the runway, and during that descent, I can fail the primary actuators on the left-hand side and the primary actuator on the right-hand side. And you can see that the system still is in stable flight because the backup hydraulic system has taken over. If now we also fail the backup system, the vehicle quickly goes out of control because it doesn't have any hydraulic systems to control it anymore. So what we've shown there is the use of fault detection, isolation, and recovery to accommodate for individual failures, switch to backup systems, and how the system reacts when all the uh, redundant systems fail.